My name is Phil Cole, and I'm the Associate Dean for Research in the School of Health and Social Sciences. What I want to talk about is research ethics in relation to your undergraduate project work. Anybody doing academic research at any level needs to make sure that their work meets ethical standards. And the School of Health and Social Sciences has process to, processes to ensure that this happens. So all undergraduate students need to get ethical approval for their final year dissertations before they start working on them. Now you'll be told about that process by your supervisor, but what I want to talk about is the very idea of research ethics. What sorts of things are at stake here, and what sorts of things do you need to think about in relation to your own work? Well, there are two basic principles when it comes to research ethics. First, it's expected that your work meets basic standards of truth, honesty and impartiality. Basically, what you present in your work should be the truth as you know it, honestly presented. While you can, of course, argue a case, you shouldn't let that blind you to the evidence against that case. So you can't present your evidence selectively. You have to be impartial in that sense. You can't choose to leave out evidence that undermines your case and only present the evidence that backs it up. That's simply dishonest. So if you are aware of evidence that undermines your argument, you have to present it in your work or at least cite it so that people can go and look at it. Second, it's expected that your work meets the standards expected by the academic community. There are basic standards of what counts as adequate evidence which you need to meet. So doing sloppy research is unethical, basically. And of course, don't claim that other people's ideas are your own. You need to give proper acknowledgement of your sources. Sometimes students ask me whether that means that when someone says something to you in a chat in the bar, do you have to acknowledge that that's where you got the idea from? And the simple answer is yes, you do. You can't claim other people's ideas as your own ever under any circumstances, and I can't emphasize that enough. Those two principles are ones you're expected to uphold in your work, and not doing so can have very serious consequences. These are things you're supposed to ensure. So if you present dishonest work and it isn't spotted and you get a grade on the assumption that it is your work, that doesn't mean it's been approved. If at any stage it comes to light that your work has been dishonest, the grade is, of course, invalidated. And of course, if it comes to light that a piece of your work has been dishonest, we have the right to go back over your previous work throughout your program. The point is that we take academic honesty very seriously indeed, and it's a basic requirement from all our students. Where your work involves human subjects, for example, if you're interviewing people, then you really do have to be careful about ensuring that you deal with them ethically. And it's these issues you would have to address when getting ethical approval for your project. These are things you have to ensure before the project starts. First, you have to inform your participants fully about the research project. They have to consent to their participation, and this needs to be informed consent. They need to know the purpose, methods, and intended possible uses of the research and what that participation involves, and whether there are any risks involved. It may be that there are research projects where fully informed consent isn't possible, but these would be exceptional. Again, I emphasize this has to be done before the project starts. Second, you have to ensure that the anonymity of your respondents is protected, and make sure they can't be identified through your work. You also have to respect the confidentiality of the information they give you through interviews. For example, making sure that information only gets used in your project where they've given their informed consent. If they've told you something in confidence, you can't use it. If they give you permission to identify them, then you have to take into account the potential risk to them of identifying them. You have to make a judgment about that. They may not know the full risks involved. One of the problems with the idea of informed consent is how informed a person's consent can ever be. So you, just, you can't just see informed consent as a box to tick. You always have to take into account the extent to which, even though you have the best level informed consent available, the subjects of your research may still not fully understand what's involved. 
you still have a responsibility towards them. So you can see that research ethics is quite a complex exercise. It's not simply a box ticking process. An informed consent is something, well, you might have a tick in the box, but there's still a question about whether you really have the informed consent you need. Third, you have to ensure that anyone who participates in your research project does so voluntarily. Of course, informed consent is crucial here again, but also you can't coerce anybody to participate. Now that might seem obvious, but things get more morally complex when we consider the use of incentives. The use of incentives to get people to participate in your research can't be ruled out, but you'd have to make a very strong case to justify it to get ethical approval for the project. And again, you'd need to get ethical approval before the project started if you were considering to use incentives. Fourth, you have to avoid harming your participants. And the harm here has to be understood as more than just physical harm or mental harm or emotional harm. For example, you have to consider harm to their interests in general. Participants in your research project should not suffer any kind of harm. Fifth, the school has a duty of care towards you and has to make sure that researchers do not put themselves at risk of harm. And so part of your assessment of your project has to be an assessment of your own risk of harm. And again, we have to understand harm widely here. For example, if you want to interview working prostitutes in the local city, this could involve a high risk of harm to yourselves. And the school may not approve a project like that. So you need to keep us fully informed of any dimension of risk that you might be subjecting yourself to. You can see from this that the school takes research ethics very seriously. Before you start work on dissertation, you need to fill in a research ethics form to get ethical approval. Your supervisor will help you to do that. And again, I emphasize that you need to have the project ethically approved by the school before you start. The project can't go ahead without ethical approval. And that's the case for all final year dissertations. These aren't rules we've made up for students. They're ethical principles and rules that apply for all academics in whatever field. We all have to meet these standards in our research. Research ethics is taken very seriously throughout the academic community. And as members of the academic community, you're expected to take them seriously too. Thanks for listening. The copyright to this recording is owned by the University of Wales, Newport.